So, uh, Spartacus was crucified like Jesus for leading a slave rebellion. True or false? True. true that's a true statement. Right. Uh, if I said it, put the was crucified, if I put like Jesus at the end here, it would be false because it wasn't a slave rebellion. But Spartacus was crucified because he was a rebel, just like Jesus. Uh, Augustine was a theologian during the Roman Empire who developed the doctrine of original sin. True. True. Alexander VI was a moral but weak pope and so therefore unable to reform the Catholic Church before the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> false, right? He was totally immoral, right? He was like, the, remember, we watched a video about him. Uh, Julius II was known as a warrior pope and mocked by Erasmus after his death as being unable to enter heaven. True. True. Erasmus was a Catholic reformer who emphasized practical experience over scholarship. False. False. The first part is true, but he emphasized scholarship. He, he thought that education would be enough to reform Christians. Uh, Martin Luther is credited with starting the Protestant Reformation. True. True. Johann Tetzel was Martin Luther's teacher and helped him to obtain a position as a professor at a university. False. False, right? Luther did all those things through a spiritual director we didn't mention, but Johann Tetzel, of course, was Luther's arch enemy, in a sense. Um, Charles V was the Holy Roman Emperor during the time of Martin Luther's protest. That's true. That's true. That is true. It gets confusing because there's a bunch of names with like numbers after them. You want to make sure you can tell the difference between them. Uh, Frederick the Wise was a devout Catholic who sought to kill Luther. False. False. No, what did he do to Luther? Yeah, he saved him. He kidnapped him, right? Threw him in the castle to keep him safe. Thomas Munster led a peasant's rebellion after he failed to convince princes to punish the ungodly. True. true. That's a true statement. Now, just as a reminder, there's not true-false questions on the test. It's a matching section. I just do true and false as a way to review. Ulrich Zwingli was a Protestant reformer from Switzerland who clashed with Luther. True. true. Philip the Magnanimous wanted to make a political alliance uniting German and Swiss Protestants, but the issue of baptism prevented it from coming into being. False. False. It was the Lord's Supper. Right, it's the Lord's Supper, not baptism. Uh, Felix Mons was an avid Baptist killed in Switzerland under Zwingli, making him the first Protestant to be martyred by other Protestants. True. True. Uh, John von Leiden helped lead the Anabaptist rising in Münster. False. No, that's true. That's a true statement. Menno Simmons held that Anabaptists should use violence to defend themselves from persecution. False. False, right. We just talked about that, so easy. John Calvin was a French reformer based in Switzerland who, whose ideas became extraordinarily popular. That's true. That's true. He fled from France to Switzerland. Remember, he was in Geneva, so he was in this perfect position to sh share his ideas. Um, because Geneva is like right by France, but in Switzerland. In a Presbyterian form of government, power flows up from the congregations. In Episcopal, it flows down from the top. True. true. Is true the peace at Augsburg held the principle of whose realm, his religion, and included Calvinism, Catholicism, and Lutheranism as possible religions. False. It did not include Calvinism. Right. Calvinism was not included in the peace of Augsburg. It is included after the Thirty Years' War. Right. It's after the Thirty Years' War. So, and the, the point, you may say, what's the big deal? The point I'm trying to get, I want people to understand, is how this idea of religious tolerance expands over time. Right? First it's just Catholics and Lutherans, then it's, it, they broaden it, and they, they'll increasingly broaden it over time. Paul III, though corrupt, opened the Council of Trent, which sought to morally reform the church and change key Catholic doctrines, and Sixtus V, a very moral pope, brought it to completion. False. false. There is a false part. What's the false part? Uh, key. key Catholic doctrines. They reaffirmed key Catholic doctrines. Right? They decided, we're going to be more Catholic, not less Catholic. Right, so think about. Remember that church that had all that was like that. The one guy said was mad. Uh, had all these images. That's kind of what Catholics did. Oh, you guys don't like images. We're going to add more images. Right, if that makes sense. We're going to double down. Uh, Charles Borromeo was a mystic who reformed an order of monks. False. Where he was a reforming bishop. Right. He was a reforming bishop. Angela Marcy had a vision that told her she would form an order to, of, for women to educate children. That is true. Teresa was an unknown reformer who had ecstatic mystical experiences of union with God. True. true. Uh, Huguenot are French Protestants. True. 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 As a quick aside, I, I was reminded of this by Dr. Robert Figueroa, was that a large number of Huguenots would flee France and uh, settle in South Carolina. So some of you, if you're, if you're South Carolina no, native, uh, might be descendant from the Huguenot. Uh, Henry IV was a Protestant who converted to Catholicism and became king of France and then tolerated Protestantism. No. no, that's true. 
It's so confusing, it has to be true, right? <laughs> Joking, but no, that is exactly what happened. That's how they finally ended the French religious wars, was the Protestant leader became a Catholic so he could become king, and then he tolerated the Protestants. And then he got assassinated by a Catholic, who didn't think he was Catholic enough. So, you know, this is a problematic period. Um, Gustavus Adolphus was behind the defenestration of Prague. False. False, right. He's not behind the defenestration of Prague. He was a Swedish king who came in and helped save the Protestant cause during the Thirty Years' War, right? The Catholics were winning, but then later on, Gustavus Adolphus will intervene and help turn that around for the Protestants. And of course, what does defenestration mean? Throw out the window. Best word in the world, it's going to be on the test. That is awesome. In Magdeburg, Catholics and Protestants routinely massacred each other. False, right? One thing we tried to emphasize was that there was, a, this is getting later on in the period, there was, they often would sometimes help each other, even though this is a war ostensibly between Catholics and Protestants. By this time, it was moving, more, becoming more political. Uh, so remember, the Protestants had allowed Catholic monks to live in the city that they controlled, and the Catholic monks returned the favor by allowing Protestants to take refuge there uh, during the actual fight. In Spanish Catholicism, the disciple James was a figure who united Catholics and Protestants. False. No, he, remember, he was the warrior guy, right? Catholics saw him as James the Moor Slayer, right? He's the guy that will help lead us into victory. And this is James the disciple, uh, the brother of Christ, I think, <coughs> referred to. Afonso Nzinga was the Catholic king of the Congo Kingdom who made war on idolatry. True. That is a true statement. Sangamento were African rituals of baptism. False. False. They were for preparing for war. Right, that was one where they were preparing for war. I, I think I showed, you may remember we looked at the picture of the uh, Western, they were standing in front of a church, and the Africans had swords and shields, and a priest was blessing them, right, getting them ready for war. Uh, Bartolomeu de las Casas initially supported enslaving Africans taken in just wars, but eventually rejected all slavery as wrong. That is a true statement. Hernan Cortez was depicted as a Catholic favor by God who made a legal claim to Native American land by cutting a tree in a legal ritual. That is true. Right? He pulled out his sword and he cut this tree and said, if anyone wants to challenge me, go ahead and do so. And of course, none of the Native Americans do because they're gone and B, they wouldn't have understood him anyway because he said this in Spanish. And then they had a notary write it down. So it's a very kind of curious ritual, but they did perform it, right, to say that we have now legal claim to this land. Uh, Martin de Port was a mixed race saint who became the leader of the Dominicans. False. False, right. This first part is true. Remember, he was not allowed even to become a full Dominican. He was basically like a porter or servant. He was the doorman, right? I wanted to highlight this to show this kind of, uh, uh, well, racism that existed. Uh, even though the, the, he was a saint, people were still racist towards him. Uh, Juan Diego was a Native American who believed he had... Oh, okay. We'll stop there because that's material we'll cover 